Okay, guys, bear with me. I'm holding the camera by hand, so I might be a little shaky. Uh, but I wanted to show you what you're going to need to make your chicken saddles. Um, you're going to need two 10 by 10 squares cut of your fabric, your outer fabric. You're going to need a 10 by 10 square of your inner fabric. That's going to help cushion your, your saddle and help keep your uh, rooster's claws from going through or spurs hitting your hen's back. I'm using uh, felt here. This is just cotton. You're gonna need a 12 inch piece of an elastic. Um, don't mind mine, Mine's, I've had mine for a long time so it's kind of discolored, but who cares, it's going on a chicken. Um, this is a half inch wide elastic, 12 inch cut piece. And you're gonna need cam snaps, and a thing to put your snaps on with, or Velcro. If you don't have cam snaps, go ahead and grab you some Velcro. Um, you can sew the Velcro on just as easy as you can put these snaps on. So, or whatever else you guys can come up with that you want to fasten your uh, elastic to your saddles with. Alrighty. And I'm going to meet you over at the Cricut machine. I'm going to show you guys how to uh, put your fabrics on your mats. And show you the Cricut machine. I'm using the Cricut Maker. I'm going to show you how my Cricut Maker actually cuts these. And you're going to need a 12-inch mat for material, the pink mat. And let me go right over here and show you. You're going to need your 12-inch fabric mat. So for the Cricut. And I have a mess because I've already been cutting some out. So don't mind that. And there's a saddle already made. <laughs> Sneak preview there. Okay. So sorry about that. Don't mean to make you sick. But two pieces of cotton fabric. A half inch elastic cut 12 inches cam snaps or velcro and your whatever kind of fabric you want to put on your inside i would suggest using any kind of non-woven fabric uh for your thickness you could use a pell on top inner interfacing if you wanted to um i'm using the felt because i want to have a little bit of a cushion there and to help keep my rooster's claws from going through this and tearing holes in this um this fabric, uh, cotton fabric. You don't have to put it in a centerpiece. You can just do the cotton fabric if you want, but I suggest you using some type of um, uh, mediocre, non-woven uh, pellon or some type of interfacing that you iron on. I do suggest you use it. Um, it will help keep your hen saddles uh, lasting for a longer time. Alrighty, meet you over at my Cricut. Okay, guys. This is my Cricut Design Space. This is showing you the saddle uh, pattern cutouts. Um, this is what it's going to look like when you open your Cricut, or open your Cricut Design Space. Um, this is, uh, any of these two pieces can be used as your inner piece. Um, this is just going to be one of your back, you know, like your front and back fabric. This is the fabric that's going to have all your lines on the drawn lines from your Cricut uh, to show you where to sew and so when you hit make it let's hit make it all right it's going to come up in your screen it turns the saddles upside down and your first one should be this one with all your writing on it so when you put your fabric on your mat I wanted to show you guys this when you put your fabric on your mat and I always say that that's the top of my mat, the one with the little hole for the hanger. So you just remember that it's got your saddle upside down, the pattern. So I'm putting my fabric with my chicken's heads going to the bottom of this mat. Because it, when you put this on your chicken, the top part is this, this part here. So I want my top directional fabric going this way. Hope that makes sense. I hate that Cricut turns my patterns upside down, but it does. So just remember if you have a directional fabric to turn it to match this. <laughs> Sorry about that. I don't know why it turns them upside down, but it does. So you're gonna make sure your fabric's on your mat upside down. And you also wanna make sure your pretty side is down to your mat. Your back of your fabric should be facing here so that it can actually draw on the back side okay and we're going to go over here let's see let me get rid of some of this stuff that's happening here 
and we are going to hit continue sorry guys i am holding my camera i do apologize okay we are at the machine so bear with me again i'm having to do this and you have to hold these mats so i have my fabric marker not my silver one in here but i have my fabric marker my rotary blade and then i'm going to hit go so hang on one second i'm going to hit go and let this mat mat load and then remember when you're cutting your fabrics and stuff you want to push all your uh roller pieces these white ones all the way to one side so let me get this mat loaded and i'll be right back okay now my mat's in and loaded it's showing me that it's ready to cut so i'm gonna hit that and this first piece like i said it's gonna draw on your fabric so make sure your fabric's wrong side and i'm not gonna make you endure the whole time of this thing drawing this because it takes it a few minutes to draw these little lines. But it is in the process of drawing and then next it's gonna cut the little fabric pieces out. So I'll be right back. Okay, just wanted to show you, it is now getting ready to cut. I apologize, you see my shadow because my lights are all behind me and there's one over to the right of me so you're catching shadows <laughs> but it is now cutting so it made sure i had the blade in that's what it done and now it's cutting around the corners and here you can see all your lines that it has put on it has to go ahead and turn so it's turning the blade that's what it's doing that's all it is and so it, this one like i said marks all this so and this is washable marker so don't worry if you see it on the fronts of your see voila you're gonna pull that out and there's your little thing but you will probably see some of this marker come through on the front i promise you once you say this and turn it you won't see it so <laughs> and plus it washes out all righty i'm gonna unload the mat and meet you back over on the um cutting boards over here okay now as y'all saw i started to peel this off a while ago and that comes right off and then you have your voila a piece of your saddle <laughs> okay i'm not gonna make you watch these cut these it cuts them the same way you just have to go into your um back into your cricket thing and set up felt for being cut um just like i showed you how to set your material for the uh, cotton so that's the only difference you just when you get to this part just go in and cut uh whatever your uh inside pieces are going to be uh you'll just have to adjust your fabric for that so just remember oops i'm getting crazy okay just remember put your fabric on upside down to make sure it cuts it properly and make sure you take your bear and make sure your fabric is on your um, mat all flat okay now I'm not gonna make you watch these two cut but I'll be right back All right, one quick thing I was gonna show you guys when you hit make it. Remember I said it turns my, my images upside down, my pattern. If you don't like that and you wanna change it, all you have to do is touch that and this is gonna come up with a little blue box around it and you can actually rotate this in here, just like that. And it'll turn it up. That way you won't have to turn your fabric upside down. So I meant to tell you that a while ago, but there we go. All you have to do is turn that around. Just like that, and you're done. And you have to do it to each one. You have to come in here and do it before you hit go. Um, come in here and go ahead and turn each one. Just touch each one like that. 
and just turn them around and that's all you do and then you're going to hit continue but if you hit continue before you turn them you won't be able to turn them you have to go back to your mat and start over so but go click each one like that and turn them before you hit continue okay i've got it fixed with the marker in it now and when you hit make it this one is upright and these two are still turned over i don't know i've tried everything to fix these two and i don't know if anybody has any suggestions holler at me or comment below <clears throat> excuse me let me know if there's a way to turn those i've tried to attach them i've tried to group them but it says that then it makes it too big and it doesn't want to um put it on my mat says era so anyway um i don't know exactly what i'm doing wrong on that but um anyway this is right for you now this first one you just have to come in here and touch these and turn these two um to make them right so once you touch them remember just flip them around and do both of them and then hit continue um if you hit continue before you flip them you won't be able to flip them so but if you don't mind them being upside down just make sure you if you have a directional fabric that you put them on your your mats right before you cut them so okay dokie that's what i want to show you real quick that it is fixed in here but other than these two being upside down when you make it i think we can work with that so all righty anyway let me move this out of the way and we've got our fabrics cut now remember you're going to lay this one on this is the one that doesn't have the markings so go ahead and lay it on your um inner liner fabric and then this is the one that has your markings and lay it face up and then you can pin it with pins if you have pins or if you have those little wonder clips just go ahead and clip it so and all my clips are over on my machine so i'll take you over there and um, show you how to sew this thing together and then put your elastic and your snaps on Alrighty, now we've got our pattern. Let me get this other light on here so you guys can see a little bit better. We've got our pattern done off of our Cricut machine. And our Cricut drew our lines, remember, here like this. I've got all my fabrics laying out here together. You can put whatever you want inside. I've got a piece of felt here to give it some stiffness. And um, you don't want your rooster's claws going through. So I put a good, good, um, non-woven fabric in here um like this is felt um then you're going to lay that one on top just like that face side up because it's going to go on the back of this one then you're going to lay your fabric that has your markings face side down just like this that way you can see your markings on top of your other one well i can't pick it back up <laughs> sorry <sighs> my fingers aren't working this morning guys i apologize okay face sides pretty sides together directional fabric make sure everything's going the same way so all my chickens are going up we're going to sew across here back tack back tack then we're going to skip we're going to come down to here so all the way around you know back tack here back tack here you're going to leave this open you're going to come across here you're going to sew back tack, sew all the way up to here, and back tack. So you're going to have a little opening here and a little opening here. And then you're going to have a, um, when you turn it, there will be a space in between here for you to run your um, elastic. So let's get this sewed. I'm using black thread, guys, so hopefully you can see this. Let's make sure all your fabrics together. You can even... If you're worried about your fabric moving go ahead and put your clips on it make sure everything's together like you want it i'm gonna put my needle remember start where my marks are don't start all the way out to the edge put your needle right there at the beginning of that blue mark run it you're gonna back tack it all the way across and 
and butt tuck. My little snips aren't the sharpest in the world, but they work. So you have a your sewed here. Actually, you're gonna cut. This is your opening right here where you're gonna run your um, elastic. That's why you got these two little openings here and here. So you got a, a nice little pocket about yay big, about a half inch to run your um, elastic through. But this is what it's gonna look like right here, sewed across the top of the line. Now come down here to this one. Put my needle in my mark there. Make sure you get a, a good little backpack there. And follow the line all the way around. Come on down. in there to clip my thread we'll be doing good all right let's clip our threads them out of our way now you're gonna look like this start here come all the way around just follow on your blue line now you're gonna come over here put your needle right there at the beginning of the blue line back tight and come on around. Maybe clip. What you look like you come up around here and you back tack now you're going to turn it this is going to stay to that side you're going to turn your two fabrics the good sides here just going to come in here and turn well let's cut these corners right here you don't want all this up here you can actually trim a little bit of this off if you need to but i am going to kind of cut a little bit of this here so it's not so bulky right there when i do turn it and I'm going to go ahead and um, trim my, do my little corners here. And I have left my, be right back. I'm going to grab, okay. I hope you guys can see this. Yep, I'm going to pull it up here. I'm going to go ahead and cut little, well, I'm going to get these scissors to work. Go ahead and cut little darts right here where they turn. Just in the corners. All you need, just don't cut your your fabric or your stitches. I'm sorry. Go ahead and cut your little darts in. And right in here where it turns here at the neck of it. Okay. Now we're going to turn it. That just helps these corners turn better. This is a simple little chicken saddle. Simple, simple. Just make sure you get your corners turned out. Really good. And if your fabric pops out up here at the top, don't worry about it. You can push it back in. Work 
work with me here. Little chicken saddle. All my corners pushed. Now, now there's our chicken saddle turned. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back over here to the table and I'm gonna get my elastic. I'm gonna push all this back in up here where it came out when I pushed it. I'll just make it look kind of nice right there like that. Just get all your fabric pushed back in. Now, like that, just that way it'll be nice. And when you push your um, elastic back in here, it's going to push your fabric out anyway. You can fix it all again. But um, what we're going to do now is go over here and go ahead and get the elastic in and get it um, snapped down. And I'll meet you back over at my table. Okay, we're back at the table. I've cut a 12 inch piece of elastic. This is a half inch wide. So just cut your 12 inch piece. It can be a little over 12, it doesn't matter. It's not, not a big deal if you're off a little bit, but I do a 12 inch piece and then I'll just run it through here. You may have to come in here with your finger. Maybe. <laughs> I'm telling you, things don't happen so easy when you're on camera. Okay, now now go ahead and get your fabrics all pushed back in here. Now, it's a hen saddle. It doesn't have to be perfect, but see my fabric popped right back out. Okay, so I'm going to keep working with this for a second until I get this the way I want it. All right, Fabric, work with me here. Now, now she's working right. This one. Okay. And you just wanna make sure that stays up towards your top anyway. But now we're gonna put our snaps in too and um, put your snaps on the end and then we're going to go in here and sew this down actually let's go do our sewing this in first and make sure we get this all on the same on the same um widths on each side and you can take your little clips and just clip it here and um and hold it in i don't have my clips over here but i'm going to hold it when i sew it and all i'm going to do over the sewing machine i'm not going to drag you back to the sewing machine with me real quick all I'm going to do is come down through here and sew this and do a top stitch all the way around. Hope you guys can see that. Let me do that again. I'm going to come down through here. Make sure you got your even amounts on each side. I'm going to come right down through here and top stitch all the way around. I'm even going to push this in. Make it nice. I'm going to top stitch right across that. Make sure that's all in. Come around here and top stitch right here, and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Now I've got all this done. Oops, got some threads hanging out there. But anyway, um, I've done a simple top stitch all the way around, closing my bottom where I turned it. My elastic sewed in there. It's not moving. So now we're going to add some buttons. Now, our snaps. If you don't have snaps, I'm using cam snaps. If you don't have the snaps, you can put Velcro. Velcro works too. Just put your Velcro piece on here and just come down here and Velcro it straight to it. So that's all you're gonna do. Put your Velcro on and Velcro her to her. But I've got snaps and I'm gonna use snaps. And I'm gonna put, um, I think I'm gonna put black snaps on. Yep, I'm going to use black snaps for this one. And I'm going to put my 
mill side down on here. So I'm gonna put it right in here. It's right above, right in this corner. It's where I'm gonna put the mill side. So I'm just gonna poke a hole with my awl, I think that's what you call it. Owl, awl, everybody probably has different names for them. Anyway, it just punches a hole so that I can get my snap put right in there. My little barb will come up through there in that hole. And I'm going to put my mail side on right there. And I'm going to come in here with my cam snap. Make sure it's on there good. And now I'm going to come up here. It's right here on the end. You don't want to go right dead on your end because you don't want them to pull out. So I come up about a fourth of an inch there and make my hole. Now, remember, I'll put that one in there. Remember, when you come around, you want your female side on this side to meet your male side. So your side like that side like you're gonna say they snap you don't want to put them on the wrong sides in other words so you know, if I can find a female I have all my stuff up here is that my females yes I'm gonna go put my female side on here and come in with my cam snap And now we should have a snap, just like so. See, this one's gonna come on this side, do the same thing. And so I wanna make sure they're even. So let me pull this snap back apart and I'm gonna come right across here with my finger and I'm gonna poke my hole right there. Cause you want them to be as close as possible. You don't want to have one way up and one way down, so. Put my mail one on, and if you're in doubt, lay it down there and look at it. And that's close enough. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you don't want to way off. Go ahead and put your snaps down on there. Now we're gonna do the female part on this one. Same distance. Right there. Don't poke your finger with that thing. I have done that and that hurts. I'm about to put that on the wrong side. I'm not paying attention. We have to have our female. Test your snap. Oh, and you know what? I put grab the mail. Duh. Okay, we can take these off. No problem. I have a thing that will pop these right off here. This one, but I know it'll work on my other one. Yeah, I'm gonna have to use my big one. So if you mess up like I do, you can also break these off. I apologize. See, nothing ever works right on on camera. <laughs> but there are ways you can take um, a hammer and pinch them and break them. But I'm going to do it on this thing. I'll show you how to take this off. See, you're learning more, more than you bargained for here. I think this is yeah, it's the one that pokes the hole.
I am doing it wrong. Maybe I'll have to break it loose first. So I'm telling you, nothing ever works right on camera. Never. <laughs> Plastic snapper. Here it is. The this is why I had it right. I had the right one in. I just didn't change my bottoms out. You have to take this out. Put this in. I don't know if that's right either, but I think it goes like that. And that pokes a hole in it and takes it right off. Yep, it shot my other piece off somewhere. Anyway, that's how you break that off. <laughs> okay. Phew. Have me worried there for a second, guys. I don't usually worry about a whole lot. Now, female, where are you? Is that my girl? Yep. Yep, we just wasn't paying attention. Now, this thing puts on snaps as well, so you just have to change all this back out and put the thing on the hat on there, and then these two things here actually put the male and the female. You have two different ones. And they go in here, and this one actually we'll put them on too, but I'll just use this one because it's simpler for video purposes. And this doesn't want to come in and out. You have to be, this thing is so touchy. I'll come out of there for just a second. Really? <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm not having good luck this morning. Okay, let's try that again. I just didn't have it in there. Good. All right, here we go. Making sure we have a... Am I out of females? Why can't I cannot find a female. There she is. Okay, female. Putting her on. Now, if all goes right, we should snap. <laughs> snap. And there's your chicken saddle. It shouldn't be that hard, guys. I just make things harder than it always is, especially on um, on camera. But there's your little chicken saddle, and these just go around under your wings. That's all it is to it. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. hope it helps you make your uh, chicken saddles. Um, hope it makes it easy for you. <laughs> Thanks, guys. See you in the next video.